South Africa, a popular pastor, I mean, Prophet Bushiri, uh, who calls himself Major One Prophet. You guys remember the iPad Miracle Performing Prophet? Yeah. Can I capture? Oh, keep a man of God. Uh -huh, exactly that one thank you very much so the 35 year old shepherd Oxley Bushiri was arrested last Friday with his wife and they've both been charged with fraud and money laundry of course his church members are really upset they are saying that this is a persecution against the man of God in fact they had to postpone his court hearing last Monday because his church members were outside protesting and praying vigorously <laughs> So they postponed it till last Wednesday. Also, many of them believe that the man of God was arrested simply because he's rich and people are jealous of him. And of course, he's rich. We've seen the houses. We saw the car that he bought for his six-year-old daughter. We've seen the cars that he drives and we've seen the private jets. So his church members believe that this is why he's been persecuted. Black people, they're always against black people. If a black person gets rich, always they go behind him. Yes. Major one has brought civilization this country. Yes. That because our father is rich, they are taking him. So they are also saying that uh, people holding him will burn. I'm not sure if they mean burn in hellfire, but they just said they will burn. Those criminals are going to pay. They are going to pay. Anyway, his church members are now threatening to boycott the upcoming South African election if their prophet is not released. And we are going to show the government that the power of the people is more powerful because it's the power from God. If the government is not supporting us in our fight, we're not going to vote. Why vote for a government that is arresting our, the people of God? Now, keep in mind that since early 2018, there has been several reports that uh, Bushiri transports about 15 million rents from South Africa in his private jet to his home country, Malawi, every month. But he's been interviewed about this and he denied it. So you're saying those reports that you transported 50 million rent out of South Africa are false? Completely false. Okay. Uh, because number one, I can't afford that amount of money. It's a lot of money. And number two, um, as, as the, the report said that I used my private jet to transfer money, it's quite amazing because my private jet was under maintenance for the past 10 months last year, so I didn't use it last year. But you know, the security operatives have charged him with fraud and money laundry. Keep in mind though that before this happened, on December 28th of 2018, during their final anointing service of the year, there was a heavy rainfall which led to a stampede as several people rushed to get inside his church. In the process, three women died and several others were injured. Now the problem is before the police arrived at the scene, the church took the bodies of the three women who died to a private mortuary and they did not tell the police about it. So the family members of those who died had to be looking for their loved ones. It took them four days to finally find their loved ones. When they found their loved ones at this private mortuary, they had to call the police before their loved ones were released to them. The mortuary that was, she was kept, that mortuary is in Wiki. There's no business there. They take people to their mortuary so that we can't find them. That mortuary belongs to a pastor in the church. There's a security guard there. He's, he, was, he, he was told no one must see the, the people that are inside the, uh, uh, until the police intervened. So a lot of people are angry that the church was trying to cover up what happened. Keep in mind that that night when the stampede happened and people died, they had the service after getting rid of the bodies. It was like nothing happened. They went on like business as usual. <laughs> But when the police found out about the people who died, they closed down their church for four weeks. So a lot of South Africans are upset that even though they didn't cause the stampede, that there was no remorse for those who died and that they got rid of the bodies quickly without letting the police know as if they were trying to cover up something. Meanwhile, some of his church members are saying that he wasn't the one that invited the people who died and that he didn't cause the stampede. He's not responsible for what happened. So why should they stop their church services for the sake of those who died? Anyway, as it is, 
families right now, some family members of those who died are asking for one million rand each as compensation from the prophet. My mother's body was like, you know, when I found her on Monday, we struggled to find my mother. It was smelling. Sanko is calling for the bereaved families to be compensated with no less than a million rand each. Meanwhile, some South Africans are protesting that he must leave their country. Well, the protesters are demanding that Bushiri leave South Africa and return to his home country. On Friday night, irate members of Sanko in Swani blockaded the road next to one of the gates leading into the Pretoria show grounds. They are demanding that the charismatic pastor leave the country. The church's lawyer agrees to meet them on Monday. In the meantime, the man of God has been granted bail and his wife and his case has been adjourned. Breaking news, enlightened Christian gathering leadership at Bushiri and his wife have been granted 100,000 rand bail. The case has been postponed to the 10th of May. We'll keep you guys posted on the court case. But you guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.